Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Autocar Quick News where we get you up to speed on the latest news from the automotive world. Before we begin, please do subscribe to the Autocar India channel if you haven't already and hit the bell icon to be notified of all our uploads. We start this week's news with the much awaited unveil of the Toyota Innova Hi-Cross. The Innova Hi-Cross is an all new model and marks a significant departure from earlier Innovas. In length and width, the Hi-Cross is marginally larger than the current Innova Crysta and it's got a 100mm longer wheelbase as well. The Hi-Cross is unmistakably an MPV in shape, but the raised bonnet and large grille are elements that will strike a chord in SUV crazy India. A large glass house, chunky tires and cladding at the base of the doors and rear bumpers are other elements of note. Inside, the Hi-Cross comes across as more premium to the Innova Crysta already on sale. The dashboard sports a layered look and comes with a large 10.1-inch floating touchscreen in the top-end versions. The Innova Hi-Cross will be offered in 3-row, 7 or 8-seat layouts. The 7-seat configuration gets two captain's chairs with a fold-out legrest in the middle row and a bench seat for the third row. The 8-seat layout, on the other hand, gets bench seats for both second and third rows. Toyota is providing three-point seat belts for all passengers. The Innova Hi-Cross comes in a total of five variants and Toyota has equipped the higher variants with features like paddle shifters, connected car tech, ventilated front seats, 9-speaker JBL audio system, ambient lighting, multi-zone climate control and a powered tailgate. The Hi-Cross also comes with a large panoramic sunroof which is a first for an Innova. Safety kit includes six airbags, ABS with EBD, traction control and ESP and there's Toyota's safety suite of ADAS Tech 2. The safety suite comes with features such as lane departure warning, blind spot monitor, adaptive cruise control and autonomous emergency braking. Under the skin, the Innova Hi-Cross is very different to all Innova sold yet thanks to its monocoque construction and front-wheel drive layout. Also, the Innova Hi-Cross will be a petrol-only and automatic-only model. The Hi-Cross range will start with a naturally aspirated 2-litre petrol engine that makes 174 horsepower and 197 newton meters. The engine will be offered with a CVT gearbox. The other powertrain on offer will be a 2-litre strong hybrid petrol. The engine makes 152 horsepower and 187 newton meters and is coupled to an electric motor for a combined power output of 186 horsepower. This version of the Hi-Cross has a pure EV mode too and Toyota claims a fuel efficiency of 21.1 km per litre. The figure equates to a total range of 1,097 km on a full tank of fuel. Interestingly, buyers who want a diesel will still have the option of the Innova Crysta that will remain on sale at least through 2023. Toyota has opened bookings for the Innova Hi-Cross and will officially announce prices at launch in January 2023. We expect the Innova Hi-Cross to be priced between 22 to 28 lakh rupees ex showroom. For a more detailed look on what the Innova Hi-Cross is like, please do check out Sharpold's first look video. Bengaluru-based EV startup Praveg has launched its first model, the Defy, at an X showroom price of 39.5 lakh rupees. The all-electric SUV has been shown in pre-production form, with deliveries announced for the third quarter of 2023. The 4.9-meter-long SUV boasts of a 3-meter wheelbase between which sits the lithium-ion battery pack. Praveg says that the Defy SUV is built on a dedicated skateboard platform, which has been developed from the ground up. The Defy's length and relatively low roofline give it a Range Rover Velar-like silhouette. LED front and rear lights, a panoramic glass roof and rear-hinged rear doors are elements that will be seen on the final model for sale. Praveg says the interior space is one of the highlights on the Defy. The model will be offered with 5-seat and 4-seat configurations, the latter getting individual chairs at the back. Up front, the dashboard will be typical minimalist EV fare, with a 15.6-inch touchscreen being the go-to control for most settings. At the core of the Defy is a 90.9 kWh battery pack that powers the front and rear axle motors. The two motors produce a combined 407 horsepower and 620 Nm and enable all-wheel drive. The other numbers of interest include a 500 km plus claimed range, a 0 to 100 kph time of 4.97 seconds, and a top speed of 210 kph. The stats suggest performance at par with more expensive imported luxury SUVs. The Defy will be sold with a 7.2 kW AC home charger and will support up to 150 kW of DC fast charging. While the company will start with a direct sales model, it says it can service the Defy SUV at 34,000 PIN codes across India along with emergency roadside assistance. If you want to know more about the electric SUV, please do check out our walkaround video. Tata Motors has launched the CNG version of the Tiago NRG, with prices starting from 7.4 lakh rupees and going up to 7.8 lakh rupees. The CNG cross hatchback will be available in two variants, XT and XZ, 
which are priced about 90,000 rupees more than their petrol versions. The CNG version of the Tiago NRG is powered by the same 1.2 liter three cylinder engine as the Tiago and Tigor CNG. This engine puts out 86 horsepower and 113 newton meters in petrol mode, but 73 horsepower and 95 newton meters in CNG mode. The Tiago NRG is only offered with a 5 speed manual gearbox. The NRG's 60 liter CNG tank is positioned behind the rear seats, thus minimizing space for luggage. Tata Motors has not officially stated any figures for fuel economy, but it should be similar to the Tiago CNG's 26.49 km per kg figure. More news from Tata Motors. The car maker has launched the updated Tigor EV with a starting price of 12.49 lakh rupees ex showroom. While the basic 26 kilowatt hour battery pack and single motor arrangement is unchanged, the EV sees enhancements that have helped up the range by 9 kilometers, taking the official figure to 315 kilometers. Chief among the enhancements is regen braking that offers four levels of regen control. The Tigor EV also gets new features such as cruise control, an indirect tyre pressure monitoring system via a smartphone app and smartwatch integrated connectivity features. Interestingly, Tata Motors will be rolling out these software-based features to existing Tigor EV owners as well for no cost. Tata Motors has also rejigged the variant lineup with this update. The XM variant makes way for the 12.99 lakh rupee XT that comes with added features like a 7-inch touchscreen and steering mounted controls. The 13.49 lakh rupee Tigor EV XZ Plus now gets cruise control, rain sensing wipers, and auto headlamps. Tata has also added a new top spec XZ Plus Lux variant priced at 13.75 lakh rupees. This version comes with a contrast black roof, leather at upholstery, and leather wrap steering wheel. Maruti Suzuki has updated its eco utility vehicle with the move to the newer 1.2 litre K series petrol engine. The engine replaces the old 1.2 litre G series power plant. The new K-Series 1.2-litre dual-jet engine makes 81 horsepower in petrol mode and 72 horsepower in CNG mode. The sole transmission on offer is a 5-speed manual. Maruti claims that the updated Eco delivers fuel efficiency of 19.71 kpl in petrol-only mode, up from the 16.11 kpl achieved by the outgoing engine. Meanwhile, the SCNG variants return a fuel efficiency of 26.78 km per kg, up from the earlier 20.88 km per kg figure. While the utilitarian Eco remains basic in terms of features, the update does bring in a new steering wheel, digital instrument cluster, and rotary aircon controls. Prices for the Eco range start at 5.1 lakh rupees for the fleet only 2 B version, while versions for private use are available from rupees 5.13 lakh. Citroen has announced that the all electric version of its C3 hatchback will go on sale in India in early 2023. The model will be marketed as the EC3. The model will feature a 30.2 kWh battery pack that will power a 86 horsepower and 143 Nm motor. Citroen hasn't disclosed range as yet, but the figure should be higher than the 315 km that the Tata Tiago EV is rated at with its smaller 24 kWh battery pack. The Citroen EC3 will be offered with a 3.3 kW onboard AC charger and will be capable of CCS2 fast charging. Although no indication of price and positioning have been given as yet, it's fair to assume an ex showroom price in the 10 to 12 lakh rupee bracket. If that's the case, then the EC3 would be among the most affordable EVs in India. If you're keen on a Honda diesel car, you'd better buy one soon. That's because the car maker will stop diesel car production in India by Feb 2023. The implementation of RDE or Real Driving Emission norms in India from April 2023 was the catalyst for this decision. It's understood that upgrading the 1.5 liter iDTEC engine to meet the new emission standards would require a huge investment, which would have made the cars unduly expensive. Honda has already stopped producing the WRB diesel, and over the next few months, diesel versions of the Amaze and City will also go out of production. There's some good news for fans of the Renault Duster. The next-gen model will make its way to India as part of a near 4,000 crore rupee investment set to be announced by Renault Nissan in the coming days. The bulk of the money will go towards bringing a new platform, the CMFB, into India. This will eventually help the brands to launch a bunch of new models, including the much-loved Renault Duster SUV in an all-new guise. The CMFB platform will be localized to a high degree and will also spawn a larger Renault SUV derived from the Bigster concept, which will likely have seven seats. Eventually, an EV could be spawned off this architecture, given that the CMFB also has an electric derivative called the CMFB EV. Lamborghini has launched the updated Urus in India in Performante guys, with prices starting from 4.22 crore rupees ex showroom. 
the midlife refresh comes with subtle changes to the exterior like a new bonnet with cooling vents, a slightly more aggressive front bumper design and a redesigned rear bumper with new vents on the side. The Performante can also be optioned with 23-inch alloy wheels. The updated Urus uses the same 4-litre twin-turbocharged V8 petrol engine as before but with power up to 666 horsepower, a 0 to 100 kph time of 3.3 seconds and a top speed of 306 kph are other highlights. The Urus Performante that's been launched can be thought of as the handling-oriented version of Lambo Super SUV. Holding the key to that is the adoption of a coil spring setup that replaces the air suspension of the standard Urus. With the update, the Lambo SUV also condenses three of its former off-road modes into a single rally mode. The second edition of the OLX Autos and Autocar India Pre-Owned Car Awards are coming soon. The awards commemorate the best cars in the pre-owned market to help buyers make the right pick. This year's contenders will be judged on a wide range of parameters by an esteemed panel of jurors from different spheres of the automotive industry. On the jury this year are Amit Kumar of OLX, Ravi Bhatia of Jato Dynamics India, Avik Chattopadhyay, co-founder and partner of Experial, Hemal Thakkar, Director Consulting for Crystal Marketing, Intelligence and Analytics, as well as Autocar India's very own Horma Sorabji, Renuka Kirpalani and Sergius Barreto. You can also take part by casting your vote for your pick of the pre-owned cars available in the days to come. Stay tuned to Autocar India's social media handles to know more. Now moving to bike news, EV startup Ultraviolet has finally launched its much-awaited first product, the F77 electric motorcycle. Prices for the electric motorcycle start at 3.8 lakh rupees for the original. The higher spec Recon has been priced at 4.55 lakh rupees, while a limited edition F77 is available for 5.5 lakh rupees. To talk variant-wise specs, the Ultraviolet F77 Original gets a 7.1 kWh battery that enables a claimed range of 207 km on the Indian driving cycle. Its e-motor makes 27 kW and 85 Nm. The F77 Recon, on the other hand, features a larger 10.3 kWh battery with a longer 307 km range. Power and torque are also higher with figures of 29 kW and 95 Nm respectively. The limited edition F77, of which only 77 units will be available, builds on the recon specs with a peak power output of 30.2 kW and 100 Nm of torque. The battery can be charged with either a standard charger which can top the battery up at 35 km per hour or a boost charger which speeds it up to 75 km per hour. The boost charger is optional on both variants. The chassis nestling the battery pack on the Ultraviolet F77 is a steel trellis unit with an aluminium bulkhead. Suspension duties are taken care of by a 41mm upside down fork and a monoshock, both of which are adjustable for preload. As for features, Ultraviolet has equipped the F77 with a 5-inch TFT dash with smartphone connectivity, enabling features such as turn-by-turn -turn navigation and notification alerts. The F77 electric bike can be booked on Ultraviolet's website with deliveries commencing in January, although starting from Bengaluru. Deliveries in other major cities across India will follow next year. Matter Energy has unveiled its first electric bike. The yet-to-be-named motorcycle can be seen as a rival to the Auburn Roar and Torque Kratos R. The Matter Energy electric bike sports angular styling and looks similar to a traditional naked street bike. Split seats and raised clip-on handlebars are part of the package as well. The bike packs in a liquid-cooled 5 kWh battery pack that gives a range of 125 to 150 km as per matter energy. The battery powers a 10.5 kW motor and what's unique here is that drive is sent to the rear wheel via a 4-speed gearbox. Of the other things, the bike features a 7-inch touchscreen with turn-by-turn -turn navigation, notification alerts and music playback, all controlled via buttons on the handlebar-mounted switchgear. Matter Energy has not revealed much else at the moment but has confirmed that bookings for the debut model will commence in the first quarter of 2023, which is when pricing will also be announced. Deliveries start in April 2023. Talking electric bikes, we also have the first picture of Royal Enfield's own e-bike. The model is in development and has been clicked in prototype, guys. Internally dubbed as the Electric 01, the electric bike will feature some rather distinctive design elements. For instance, the front suspension is a girder fork type, typically seen on vintage bikes. A round headlight and conventional fuel tank suggest Royal Enfield is going for a retro design with modern underpinnings. There is no information about the motor, battery or other technical specifications as yet. Do note the electric RD isn't coming anytime soon. The model is said to be in the early stages of development and is a good few years away from production. 
Bajaj has launched the Pulsar P150, which now sits between the Pulsar 150 and the N160. The single seat P150 is the entry level variant and comes priced at 1.17 lakh rupees. The split seat P150 has been priced at 1.2 lakh rupees. The added 3000 rupees for the split seat model also gets you a 230mm rear disc brake, clip on handlebars, and meteor tyres. Both the variants of the P150 are powered by an air-cooled 149cc single-cylinder engine that puts out 14.5 horsepower and 13.5 newton meters. The engine is paired with a 5-speed gearbox. The Pulsar P150 takes on rivals like the Yamaha FZ FI, TBS Apache RTR 162V, and the Hero Extreme 160R. And with that, it's a wrap on a very busy week's news. Thanks for watching, and see you next week.